Navigation in SwiftUI remains cumbersome due to its limited flexibility and inconsistent behaviors across different scenarios, making it challenging to implement complex navigation flows seamlessly. This issue is the only item on my wish list for this year's WWDC, as improving navigation would significantly enhance app development. Recognizing these pain points, this video will teach you how to handle the current shortcomings of navigating in SwiftUI with practical strategies and workarounds. It will also walk you through the latest techniques and best practices, ensuring you have all the knowledge needed to effectively manage navigation in your apps. Make sure to check out my SwiftUI Summer Sale. The link is down in the description. More on this later in the video. Now, WWDC is here and I have only one item on my wish list and that is better navigation. We talked about this in the previous video. Go ahead and check out the link for the whole playlist. But basically, I would like to have better types of better API at least for navigation. And that is what I tried to create uh, last time. Let me just take a look at the code. Right over here, we have the navigation destination and you may choose to be of type link. Let's just uh, have that dot link sheet or cover and uh, this is how it looks like uh, by the way i'm just going to remove the padding right over here you shouldn't have a padding on the list it looks really ugly but there we go we can just tap on there and it's just going on a link we can just go back and you know this is of type um, link style of uh, navigation and now i already have the dismissed which we don't have with the navigation link the built-in navigation link and uh, uh, also we can easily change this to be a sheet. Let's just see how that looks like. And uh, tapping over there, just going to present a sheet, sliding it down. It's really straightforward. Again, I uh, would highly recommend taking you take a look at the previous episode, but basically uh, a caveat right over here, it's not basically a caveat. Uh, you have to be aware that this navigation destination link, that uh, view modifier that we have created, should be outside of any lazily loaded views, which is a list or a lazy V stack, A stack, all of that stuff. Okay. And it is outside, it's, it's working. The button is inside, we are triggering it. And uh, the view modifier is outside of our lazy view. And I prefer this one because uh, over the one that we're going to build out today, because this is basically a uh, Swift UI like. It's uh, using the data change to uh, manipulate the, basically the navigation, the UI, which is fine. But sometimes you don't really care about it. Sometimes you just want the user to just tap on a button and uh, just, just be taken to a destination. And for that, we already have this navigation link. I just uh, typed it out with the destination. Uh, the destination uh, would be, I don't know, text hello world. And then the label would be uh, text of tap me. And then let's remove this previous button. Let's build and run. And basically it will just do the same thing uh, with the navigation destination dot link that we have set up. Of course, this has also uh, a custom uh, UI, which we don't have with the navigation destination that we build out. But hey, there you have to live with that if you are inside the list, of course. There we go. Okay, so I want to build out something like this for the sheets, because now if you want to add a sheet, you want to create a button, have the dot sheet view modifier. No, I just want to have one view that encompasses everything. Something similar that we have right over here with the view modifier. Okay, so that's what we are going to build out today. Uh, let me just uh, comment that out and also the view modifier from our previous video. I just commented this out so you can just see it later, you know, the changes and uh, all of that. So you can just uh, be a judge uh, of what you prefer better. Okay, so this here we are going to have some sort of navigation step button. You know, the navigation link is actually a button. So let's just build it up. Hey there, the Swift UI Summer Sale just dropped and I think you'll love it. You can get everything I've made for Swift UI, 20 plus digital products, plus a spot in my live Swift UI camp on Zoom, kicking off July the 1st. It's all valued at over $3,000, but right now it's just $199.
whether you're just starting out or looking to polish your skills, this is your chance to dive in and build with confidence. Spots are limited, so don't wait too long. The link is in the description. I'm just going to scroll all the way down. Again, if you are curious about this code, check out the previous video. Link is uh, for the whole playlist is in the description. So we are going to create a struct and that will be a view. So let's just call this navigation step. And it needs a view, like, a, uh, sorry, uh, it needs a destination of type view and a label of type view. So let's just add those two. So destination of type view and then label of type view. And this will be or adhering to the view protocol. It has to have a body, text, hello world. Okay, so now we should have a clean, no warnings or errors whatsoever. Okay, in the previous episode, uh, I have set up this navigation step type link sheet or cover. We are going to use this enum right over here. So uh, we want to provide uh, what type of navigation step this uh, will be. So let uh, type, and that is of navigation step type. We're also going to add in, you know, our destination. So at view builder var. Uh, destination let's start off with the destination and then hopefully it's just going to come up with the label there we go we also need the label and then finally the on dismiss uh, var on dismiss now on dismiss is automatically added to the sheet and full screen cover I have also added this to the link type of uh, navigation. Go ahead again, check out the previous episode. But uh, just so you know, with that, we also have available on dismiss on the link, you know, this, this navigation stack type of navigation too. Okay, so let's create a custom initializer for this because I just really like to have the type, uh, uh, you know, not have that as an outer property, but an inner property, just added a underscore over here. Let's just see all of the others. Destination, uh, we have to have this as destination and not view. I know Xcode is just going to add in here view, but we just uh, we can just simply change that. Label on this miss. Okay, that's fine. And yeah, we do have our custom initializer. Now, Finally, we want to basically uh, have a button because navigation link is under the hood, a button, a custom button, but that is what we are going to have. So let's just have a button. I prefer the action and label, but uh, you know, you may choose others if you just don't want the label to be a, a view, just a string. I like this one uh, better. Okay, so we are going to have the label over here. That's fine. That's that's okay. And then we want to trigger something. You know, we want to trigger the destination to be you know, presented upon the tap of our button. Therefore, we do need a custom, you know, a, a private state variable right over here. And you know, it's it just uh, suggesting it to me. It's really nice. So is presented. We are going to pr uh, toggle is presented right over here on the tap of the button. Nice. Next up, we want to add, let's just start off with the link. So dot link, and then is presented on this miss and content. Again, take a look at the previous episode on this uh, uh, playlist to see that we can now bind is presented right over here. On this miss, we just passed it along. And then the content is our destination uh, with a small D over there. Okay. What about the sheet? Well, we just say, well, yeah, and here is where it's going to get a little bit tricky because we can't use, well, we actually can use is presented, but we should present different views uh, for different uh, uh, types, so navigation step types. So I'm, what I'm going to do is just grab all of this, put it inside the group, there we go, let's just move. Well, uh, let's just switch through the type first, switch type, and then we have link, sheet, or cover. And then I'm going to copy all of that we have uh, built out so far and put it into the link part. And for now, let's just put this also on the sheet part and also on the cover part. Now, the difference here is that we shouldn't use the link 
view modifier on the sheet, but rather the sheet with the is presented. So dollar sign is presented on this miss and then our destination, just like that. And of course, uh, the full screen cover also over here. So let's just type that out. Full screen cover, dollar sign is presented on this miss and then the destination, just like that. Okay. Uh, Oh, one thing to note, uh, we are passing along here the destination as a full screen cover and also uh, over here on the sheet. But sometimes uh, when you are presenting a sheet, you actually uh, want to um, add in a navigation stack. So instead of uh, uh, using it like that, you can just go ahead and add a navigation st stack and then the destination. There we go, that. just like that. So let me just copy all of this out and put it right over here for the full screen cover. Okay, let's just take a look at how uh, this looks like. Yes, really nice. Uh, now we can just use it. Let me just go all the way up, you know, all the way up right over here, and then just have a navigation step. Step, there we go, step, there we go. And then we have the type, destination, label, and on this means. Let's just use this one. And then dot, first of all, let's just go with the link. A destination uh, would be hello world. Label would be tap me. And on this miss would be printing out this mist. So let's build and run and see how this looks like. I know navigation step is basically doing the same thing as the navigation link. There we go. It's doing the same thing, but it has this dismissed printed out on the on this miss, which is really, really nice. Now let's just change easily to this be a sheet. It has succeeded. Tap on there, and if you slide down, it has been dismissed. And of course, this works with the full screen cover. And also on the full screen cover, of course, you can't slide down and you want to implement the dismissed environment. It's just going to work and also it's going to trigger this on dismiss. Now, one final note, uh, if you take a look at uh, my previous um, uh, uh, video, you're going to see that we have something called dot navigation destination. So actually what we can do is simplify this code and instead of using the group and the switch, I'm just going to copy this out and let's just uh, uh, delete all of this, have that button, that's fine. And then you can just use this dot navigation destination uh, type is presented and on this miss. That's basically it. And then we have the content. Let's just use the content to uh, type. There we go, is presented. Uh, we're going to bind dollar sign is presented on this miss, on this miss. And then the content is our destination. Okay, that should be fine. Everything should, all the errors should go away. Much simpler, as you can see, everything is stuck, all the logic is stuck away into the navigation destination uh, uh, view that, uh, the view modifier that I have created. Tap me, there we go, it's a sheet, it's really, really nice. Now, one thing to note, and uh, you already have it right over here. So, uh, we have this, and we talked about this in the previous uh, uh, episode, we have this, uh, navigation step with the navigation destination created inside a lazily lazy view basically it could be a list it could be a vertical stack and you should not use uh, this navigation destination is presented with the destination inside the lazily loaded view that's what this warning right over here in the console is so basically this navigation step does have one uh, limitation. It should not be added into a lazily loaded list uh, view, which is a list or a lazy V stack. Instead, let's just have a V stack and now everything should uh, work okay. Uh, let's just see that. 
tap me. Now, as you can see, no warnings right over here and it's uh, working as expected. Now, if you want to avoid this, then you should definitely check out the previous uh, uh, video where I talk about building this navigation destination view modifier, which takes all of this outside of the lazily loaded view. And if you like these types of tutorials, go ahead and check out my 50 summer sale. The link is in the description.